Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Greb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. You may have already seen us uh, across different social media platforms and seen me out at events and know who I am personally. And I'm super honored to be able to have as many people as I do know who I am and know who we are as a company. It's a huge, huge honor. That's kind of like the things that I live for is just to be able to give back to the communities, be able to make an impact in the world. And, and the fact that we are doing as much as we are in marketing, uh, just shows that we're at least letting people know that we exist and that we're here. Uh, but one of the common questions I get asked is, what do you guys do as a company? Uh, and part of that is because we work in an area where there's a lot of NDA, uh, non-disclosure type of agreements. And we can't share a lot of the different things that we are currently working on. So we can only give like a, a surface level of the type of things that we're working on or things that are not very particular proprietary towards a project or we have to get customer approvals to be able to share different contents. Uh, so I just kind of want to make this video today to, to inform everybody what it is exactly we do as a company and, and if you, if you want to give back to us and utilize us as a service, this may give you that opportunity to do so as well. So for us as a company, our core business model is robotic cells. So we're doing any type of application that involves a robotic cell, at least on, at least on an application to application basis. Uh, we're not just accepting any and every projects, but if it's your common, you know, palletizing project, pick and place, um, weld cell, those are all very common uh, projects that we work on. And then one of the next things that we kind of like dive into to dig like a little bit deeper of like who we are and what we do, uh, we're really focused on like some of the technologies, really focused on integration, right? We're systems integrators and a lot of companies are systems integrators, but I try to keep us very focused where it doesn't matter if it's a, if it's a Keyence camera or a Cognex camera, or if we're doing a line tracking technology, all these different platforms, uh, our team is able to handle because we hire individuals who are trained in those areas and, and have built out a very diverse group of members in our company that can handle many, many things. Uh, another big portion of what we do, and I, and I mentioned it previously, is robotic cells and robotic fixture design and, and fabrication manufacturing of those uh, fixtures. That's been like a huge thing of, of what we do as a company. And, and to be 100% honest with you guys, it wasn't even 100% my vision that drove us in that direction. It just happened to be the fact that we brought on individuals into our company. Okay, this guy has uh, KUKA experience, I don't. This guy has Yaskawa experience, I don't. This guy has uh, Omron PLC experience, I don't. And then through that and our expansion and growth in those ways, we've actually tended to hire a lot of individuals who have a lot of robotic weld application experience, like have spent the majority of their career in robotic welding. Now we do have uh, plenty of engineers on the material handling side of things, but because we have a slight imbalance in the, in the people that can handle, the engineers that can handle the, the welding type applications, uh, it's really driving us to go in that direction, right? Because you know our whole purpose as a company, of any company, is to provide a service, right? And, and, and one of the next big things into that is to do that at an expert level, right? And if you're not providing a service at an expert level, then why does the company not, not just go ahead and hire somebody internally, right? And train them themselves. So uh, just the fact that we, we have that ecosystem of individuals who have worked in particular areas is, is a huge, huge deal. Um, and also we have a broad knowledge in, in, in the different technologies that we've worked with. So when it comes to stuff like line tracking or vision, we still have the capability to do those different things. Which that kind of that kind of brings us into to the services side of our business. So the the mechanical engineering and, and manufacturing of you know well weld fixtures, uh, we're doing that for robot tooling. Uh, both the design and the manufacturing, uh, all different types of products really. Uh, we, we do kind of still pick and choose what exactly we do, but we'll even uh, sometimes uh, build our own conveyors internally. It kind of just depends on, does it make sense to just purchase this off the shelf or to spend our engineering resources to, to build and design uh, something along those lines. And a lot of it will have to do with like, what is our current workload? Do we have too many projects or we're too busy? Uh, and I'm only telling you these things so you kind of have an understanding of how we work, right? We're not the type of company that's gonna just 
sit here and oh we can do it all internally we can do it all internally we we do have partners and we do utilize our partners uh, i think it's very very important to do that and, and have the willingness to do that uh, you know i came from from a company where you know they try to do so much internally they try to do things and cut corners and, and not even just cut corners but do them in such a way that like you can just look at it and evidently say that's a bad idea right so like we, we try to avoid all those things and that's part of the reason for us being branded as elite automation right i probably should have led this video off with that right uh we, you know i named elite automation because i wanted everybody to know that we are going to be the best right we're striving to be the best i'm not saying we are the best but we will be the best and if we're, we're never the best then we're going to still keep striving to be the best uh and and that's that's going into everything as far as our services our employment uh, you know, I want people to, to want to work with us and be like, I have no reason to quit. Why would I ever quit there? Uh, and, and people can come to our employees and ask them things like, oh, we'll pay you X amount more or, oh, we'll give you this many more vacation days. And I just want our whole ecosystem of a company to be so good that nobody wants to leave. Uh, and it's going to take us some time to really build that out to be to the point where I really, really want it. Uh, and I have big, huge visions as far as all that stuff goes, but that's another video for another time. And then, so like the services side of things, uh, you know, us providing our services to our customers, you know, one of the big focuses is that, you know, we can do things like our installs much more quicker. We can, we can do our programming quicker. We can, you know, output the, our systems in a much quicker manner. We don't, we don't, uh, get caught up in the bureaucracy of like having so many departments and so many layers of approvals and whatnot. Uh, everything is very project and team oriented, right? So the way our company is structured is individuals uh, are, are assigned a project, right? And, and those individuals are responsible for their project. And then we'll have overall engineers. And a lot of companies are structured in this way to some degree, but there's also a little bit more of a bit of leadership within the project owners themselves, right? Uh, we wanna give our members the ability to, to lead their own project, to be responsible of their own project. Uh, and then we still all have our checks and balances to ensure that the project's on track, but also giving them the freedom to operate their project the way they feel they need to. And I feel like that, like I said, that just gives us a better uh, way to be able to service and provide our customers in a much quicker and efficient manner. So diving into a few more like the services that we offer, uh, we're offering you know our, our PLC programming, our robot programming, HMI, we're doing a lot of remote troubleshooting, remote programming slash hybrid on-site programming. So one of the things that we're also building out as a company is our remote support. So you can uh, purchase remote support packages from us and as of right now they're all custom we're, we're, we're quoting out each individual one but at some point in time you'll be able to go directly to our website see exact costings for each individual remote service that we offer and so the whole objective of that is if it's one of our non-capital projects we offer it as a service. If it's our capital project, it automatically comes on our system, wh whether it's it's purchased or not. And we do that because we want to be able to service our projects to, to the best of our ability. Uh, and, and the only way to really be able to do that is through remote services. So we're using things like VPNs, industrial PCs. We're, we're pairing our VPNs not only with a hardwire connection, but a uh, cellular connection. We're putting Wi-Fi onto our system so that way uh, our system has the ability to be connected to via Wi-Fi and, and all these are just tools that help the programmers on site and the programmers who are remote and also the individuals within your company, the engineers in your facility. So instead of having to sit there with a, a three foot ethernet cable and be plugged into the machine, uh, you can be anywhere in the general area of that machine and have the ability to program it. And, it. and if not already, you should be able to have access to the VPN and log into the VPN so you can sit back in your office and the AC and, and be able to at least monitor things, You know, maybe not make changes because of safety concerns, right? One, one of the other things that, that with our remote systems is cameras. Uh, but a lot of cu customers we're finding is like, as of right now, they're not super acceptable to cameras just because of privacy policies and whatnot. But there are a few customers who are open to that. And that's super, super powerful as well, because if we can just flip on some cameras and, and be able to see the, the work cell, uh, then that's a huge uh, added 
layer of, uh, of data that we get that we can't get any other way. So that's kind of the general summary of what we do as a company. Again, our core focus is capital projects, 110%, that's what our core focus is. Secondly, it would probably be uh, mechanical engineering machined parts. Uh, we've been doing really well, being able, been able to be very competitive in that. And it also works well for us as a business model uh, for what we're already doing and what our internal team uh, is capable of doing. But we're, we're always trying to, to win more robotic cells. If it's got any type of robot in it, we, we at least want to look at it. Uh, you know, six axis robot, delta robot, scarer robot, uh, one robot, 12 robots, you know, palletizing robots, weld robots, any of these uh, applications, these are all things that we're very, very interested and at least taking a look at. We, we may not 100% uh, want to uh, take on every single project, but we for sure don't want to take on every single project. We actually get so, a lot of projects that we actually don't care for, and we end up having to tell the customer, hey, this is not really a, a project for us. Uh, up front, we always tell people we entertain them, um, but then it just kind of depends on how sticky the actual application is. If you're trying to automate something that is not a very uh, controlled, environment, a not, very, not, not a very controlled uh, inputs to the system, then, then it's gonna be very hard to have your output ever be controlled and never have a successful system. So that's a good tip if you're looking to automate things and you're not already automating, you gotta have your inputs uh, be very controlled, right? Uh, the components that you're dealing with need to be able to be presented in the same way every time. And that's something what we do as well, we'll, we'll get uh, products presented through like bowl feeders or, or different technologies like that. Uh, and then one last thing that I do want to mention that we do uh, is AMR deployment. So AMRs are huge. I highly, highly promote that you utilize AMRs in your facility uh, if there's any possibility to do it because it's a newer technology, it's quick deployment, and it, it's just going to help you uh, be able to move your products around and, and especially with like right now with the employee shortages and whatnot the manufacturing industry is already struggling to employ people so if you can get just one more person off of a fork truck and on top of that uh, being able to just autonomously do something so if you already have robotic cells like end of line robotic cells uh, doing like palletizing or destacking or something like that and, and if AMR can come pick up the, the stack of pallets and take them to some end point even if they don't go to final destination even if it's just like it does the, the first 90% of the of the traversing from uh, start point to final destination. Destination uh, That's a huge, huge value add because then you can have just one fork truck driver zipping around and doing all the different things. Uh, and so, if, by the way, I'm kind of going backwards on this, but if you don't know what an AMR is, it stands for Autonomous Mobile Robot. It's very similar to an AGV. That would have been kind of good key information for me to tell you in the beginning. But uh, yeah, do a little bit of research on AMRs and, and see if there's something that you're interested in because we're finding a lot of customers are uh, able to deploy these, deploy these very quickly and get ROIs on the, on the system uh, very quickly as well. Hopefully that was useful for you guys to understand who we are as a company. If you have any questions or, or if we could clarify this video in any way, put it down in the comments below because I definitely want people to really understand who we are as a company, what we do as a company and uh, buy projects from us. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, you know, in reality, we, I get asked a lot, like when I'm at, out at events, like what is it exactly you guys do? Like I know you're in the automation space, you deal with robots, but they don't know if we're selling robots, integrating robots, uh, servicing robots. Like, so I think the clarity is, is very, very big. And we'll probably start talking about this more uh, in, in, in future videos because uh, we're producing a lot of content. The market sees who we are, they know who we are, uh, but there's a little bit of unclarity on, on who we are, right? So thank you for sticking around here till the end. I really appreciate you guys. And if you're interested in any more automation related content, hit that subscribe button. We have AMR videos, FANUC videos, uh, PLC videos, and just general industrial conversations uh, revolved around getting jobs, all kinds of different things. Just a list of topics that we talk about here. We don't really uh, fine tune on one particular topic. Uh, so yeah, catch y'all in the next one.